एवरीवन एंड वेलकम टू अ न्यू एपिसोड ऑफ द इंटरव्यू एक्सपीरियंस बाय आई लव मेटलॉजी आई एम छोबी एंड टुडे वी हैव भावना मैम एंड प्रियंका मैम विद अस एज अ स्पेशल गेस्ट दे पार्टिसिपेटेड इन वुमेन ऑफ मेटल प्रोग्राम सीजन 4 एंड हैड अर्न देमसेल्फ एन अपॉर्चुनिटी टू जॉइन टाटा स्टील एज एन इंटर्न वे सब्सिक्वेंटली कन्वर्टेड इनटू अ पीपीओ सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल कांग्रेचुलेशंस भावना मैम एंड प्रियंका मैम फॉर द ग्रेट अचीवमेंट थैंक यू Thank so you today we will be here. So today we will be discussing about your journey, ma'am. Okay. So to begin with, ma'am, could you please give us a brief intro about the Women of Metal program and how you got to know about this? Okay, so uh, talking about the Women of Metal program. So it's a, a scholarship program which is organized every year by Tata Steel. the main aim behind this uh, program is to increase the representation of women in the manufacturing uh, sector which is uh, generally stereotypes as a uh, male dominated sector so and the second uh, question uh, that is uh, from where i got to know about this uh, program is uh, i got to know about this program from one of my senior uh, during my uh, first year of btech program okay ma'am uh, can bhavna ma'am share how she, you got to know about this same i also got to know from one of my senior when i was in the first year of college and since then i was keeping an eye on it okay that was interesting ma'am ma'am could you please let us know about the eligibility criteria and selection procedure for this program okay so uh talking about the eligibility criteria so first thing is that you need to be a female candidate to participate in this program second thing is that you need to be uh, you need to uh, be in the second year of your btech program pursuing btech from a list of selected colleges and the third thing is that you must have a 60% aggregate in your 10th 12th or uh, till now so these are some of the eligibility criteria okay that was insightful ma'am uh, bhavna ma'am can you share the selection procedure for this program uh, yes so first uh the person has to fill the online form which uh, gets released in around april or may so after filling the online form there is an screening round where the top 50 participants get selected based on the uh, marks of that domain test and personality assessment test uh, that is we call screening round and then after the top 50 participant get their project and uh, we have to do case study for the project and there is a semi finale round after that uh, on the basis of performance in semi finale the top 10 are selected and then in the grand finale top 3 are select- selected this is the whole procedure okay that was insightful ma'am Ma'am, could you le- uh, please let us know more about the screening process and what are the subjects we need to prepare for this? Okay, so talking about the screening process, so it's an uh, online test which is organized via AMCAT platform. So uh, this uh, test is organized in two sections. The first uh, section is the personality test. Uh, for personality test, you don't need to prepare anything. You don't need to have any kind of practice or anything. You just need to answer the question on the basis of uh what morals you have and what ethics you have and the second thing is the domain uh, section uh in the domain section you are asked question from the syllabus of your second year of btech program so uh the questions are asked from subjects like the extractive metallurgy the physical metallurgy uh the uh, thermodynamics so these are uh, some of the subjects from where the questions are asked and if i talk about my preparation so I practiced questions from a uh, previous year gate uh, questions and uh, the AMCAT question. These were really uh, proved proved to be useful for me. Uh, Bhavna ma'am, can you share your approach to the screening process? Uh, uh, yes. First, adding to what Priyanka said, there is a little modification in screening test everywhere. In our time, season four. there was two sections personality assessment and domain test but earlier sometimes it was only personality assessment or sometimes it was only domain test but in our time both were combined so in subsequent seasons this could be changed slightly so candidate should be prepared for that and for uh, my approach like what how should i approach this uh, domain test is 
because the syllabus is up to uh, our fourth semester so already i was thorough with our um, syllabus so to fill the gap i also uh, learned uh, i also went through the previous year gate questions and i also went through uh, the mcat mcat uh, platform where some uh, metallurgical questions were there and one more resources i added was there is an uh, platform ask me metallurgy where they have a, a really uh, rich uh, content of uh, they have a rich collections of mcqs of uh, metallurgical engineering so i also went through that okay ma'am that was insightful ma'am what was the procedure after shortlisting okay so after the uh, announcement of top uh, 50 candidates the next process was the uh, allocation of uh, case study so uh, i think after two and a half week of the uh, announcement of results we were allocated the case study and along with the case study a mentor was uh, assigned to us so who was supposed to guide us throughout the whole process okay ma'am what was the topic of your project and how did you approach it so uh, talking about my uh, topic of uh, case study so it was uh, impact of alloying element on castability of steel so under this topic i was given four questions and i was supposed to answer uh, i was supposed to make a presentation out of uh, those four questions by answer by uh, by answering those uh, four questions so uh, since i was very novice to this uh, iron and steel uh, sector we didn't had any subject uh, till uh, our second year program so the very most important thing was gathering basics so the first thing which i did is gathering the basics then uh, after i went uh, to uh, understanding what is the requirement of the case study and then approaching the problem or appro approaching the solution of the problem as per the requirement so these are some of the uh, steps which i followed avna ma'am what was the topic of your project and how did you approach it so my case study was nomogram for bf slag chemistry for zero pyroxenite addition so for a second year student this was a very vague prob uh, problem so firstly what i did i googled these keywords like i googled each and every term of my project of my case statement and like this i tried to decode my project and honestly it took me around 3 to 4 days to understand the topic itself then uh, i contacted with my mentor he explained me in more detail and then slowly i studied the basics of what is a blast furnace and what, uh, what is the basic of iron making and like this i proceeded and then what were the resources you followed for your project uh, so i also went through science direct and research gate and academia so basically we used to google our problem and uh, keywords and whatever the pdfs or research papers or journals we used to find we used to download it from sci hub where you can get any PD, any uh, research papers in the pdf format and this was for theoretical study for literature survey and i had to explore some statistical tool also for that i explored uh, pynomo and uh, explored r software that was helpful ma'am so what was the next step after you completed your projects okay so after the completion of project the next step was the semi finale so uh, uh, earlier the semi finale was organized in offline mode uh, where the candidates were called to present their presentation uh, in jamshedpur but due to this covid situation we were uh, restricted to do so so the, the uh, presentation uh, to the semi finale went uh, through online mode uh, via ms teams so under this uh, we were supposed to uh, make a presentation out of our case study and uh, present our solution in the form of presentation we were given 15 minutes to do so and after the presentation was over a uh, 5 minutes of q and a session was organized so this is all about the semi finale okay ma'am could you please let us know more about the grand finals and what was the preparation required for this round okay so talking about me i was neither in the list of top 30 nor in the list of top 
so i didn't got the opportunity to uh, participate in grand finale however bhavna emerged out to be the uh, runner up of uh, season 4 women of metal season 4 so she would guide you in much better way uh, yes yeah, so based on the feedback whatever we received in our semi finale we were asked to modify our ppt if anything is required if any modification we wanted to do so the project was same the case study was same um, we only modified our ppt and then we presented it in our grand finale in front of jury members who were the expert of that field and uh, this was the process and based on their performance top 3 were selected okay that was insightful ma'am what were the perks and offer you got from this pro- this program okay so as i told you that i was neither in the list of top top 30 nor in the list of top 10 however my name was there in the list of top 50 so that top 50 uh, helped me in earning ppi opportunity that is pre placement interview so uh, under this ppi opportunity i was directly allowed to sit in the interview uh, where i was exempted from the other two rounds of uh, selection that is the written round and the group discussion so ultimately the interview went very fine for me and uh, ultimately i uh, converted my pbi opportunity into internship opportunity opportunity bhavna ma'am can you share the perks and offer you got from this program yes so the top 30 participants got their paid internship and additionally top 10 uh, participants received a scholarship of 2 lakh rupees and the top 3 received some goodies and gifts from tata steel that was amazing ma'am uh, would you please like to share your internship experience with us yeah okay so uh, talking about the internship experience so i would say it was a great learning experience where i interacted with a uh, great expertise who has been uh, in this sector who has been working in this manufacturing sector for the past 10 years or 15 years so every time i contacted them every time i learned something new which you can't learn from your books or pdfs so uh, i happened to learn so many great things from them uh, also it gave me an exposure of the in the, uh, uh, manufacturing sector uh, where i utilized my uh, bookish knowledge or uh, my bookish knowledge uh, in a practical way so yeah but uh, since the, as you know that our internship went in online mode so sometimes boredom hits you hard you feel like uh, you feel very stressful so i say i would i would say that if this internship would have been organized in offline mode it would have been much more uh, exciting as well as knowledge enlightening so however it was a great experience and i'm going to uh, carry this great feeling for uh, throughout my life sure ma'am and bhavna ma'am can you share your internship experience with us uh, so the approach for this internship project was very similar uh, what we had done in our women of metal program uh, after allotment to our project uh, we again contacted to our mentor and uh, then with the regular meetings and interactions uh, we tried to solve the problem whatever we had got and like this we prepared our solution we prepared a presentation for in the two months interval and then after we presented our solution to the uh, to the panel member who were the chief and experts of that particular plant so uh, this was the uh, experience and uh, one thing i would also say ki the knowledge whatever is required for these project are very little knowledge that we got from our semester or from our subject that we study in our in engineering so basically we start from the scratch and then we go to the optimum level whatever is required this was experience. that was insightful ma'am ma'am could you let us know more uh, let us know about your strategies which you adopted to sail through the entire process okay so talking about my strategy so i would say i uh, it it's not like strategy i would say it's my uh, mantra which i try to you know implement in every sphere so it's like dividing the work into smaller uh, parts and then completing those uh, smaller parts as per your uh, schedule so uh, 
and never forget to reward yourself after the completion of any task and the second thing is be honest with your work whatever you are doing just do it wholeheartedly and the third thing is whenever you are doing anything just keep one thing in your mind either you uh, feel the pain of discipline or the pain of regret so uh, if you feel the pain of discipline you are going to get a uh, good reward at the end of the day so this was my strategy or uh, mantra i would say bhavna ma'am can you share your strategies sure uh, if i summarize my whole strategy it would be ki i focused on one thing at a time like suppose the first stage is domain test then i will focus only on revising and sharpening my technical concepts then i am not worried about the interview or the presentation or the end result there is nothing else similarly if i am working on the project then i will put my heart and soul into this project only there is nothing else for me at that time so this morality helped me to stay calm and doing well till the finale that was idealistic ma'am so the last question of the evening could you please share some tips for us to keep in mind okay uh, so talking about the tips so i would say that you need to lay more emphasis on your presentation try to make your presentation as much best as you can you know as much as much best best and as much dynamic as you can because your presentation should speak even if you are not uh, presenting your presentation anybody seeing your presentation that person should be able to understand that what your presentation wants to say it should be dynamic and very fine so uh, this is what i would say that uh, focus more on your presentation and at the same time your communication so these things are uh, these are the two tips that i would like to give to other fellow uh, aspirants Uh, Bhavna ma'am, can you share some tips for us to keep in mind? Uh, yes, the first thing I would say that this is a one of a kind opportunity. If you are into it, then use this opportunity very well, and anyone can do it with a bit of patience and a lot of efforts. So you should use this opportunity really well. And second thing is, I would suggest to be in constant touch with your mentor so that you are on the right track. because this is my personal experience that the first approach toward the project is always wrong or very devi- deviated from the actual project so it would be better to be in constant touch with the guide so that we don't put our time and energy into the wrong approach and in the wrong direction and uh, last thing that we, as priyanka said that your presentation should be very dynamic like i remember my mentor saying ki bhavna tumhari mehnat tumhare presentation mein dikhni chahiye so give sufficient time to prepare your presentation because it would require a lot of uh, sanitization of uh, sanitization of the project and the presentation uh, so make it crisp and concise and present it with your 100% confidence that's it that was helpful ma'am thank you ma'am for taking your taking some time off from your busy schedule it was a pleasure to have you both here with us and your words today were really informative and beneficial with this we would like to end our interview here thank you everyone and wishing you all the best for your future thank you